Hello, everyone, and welcome to At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer, and welcome to our guest, Bill McDermott, CEO of ServiceNow. Bill, great to see you. Thank you very much, Andy. Great to be with you again. I want to start off by asking you to tell us about ServiceNow, just for people who aren't so familiar with the company. Yeah, ServiceNow is the workflow automation market leader. So we make a platform that enables companies to digitally transform their business end to end. So if you're running IT, your employee experience, taking care of your customers, or making your engineers and knowledge workers far more productive, you can do it all on one platform with a consumer grade user experience, and you can fundamentally transform how you run your company. All right, this is an enterprise software business. Absolutely. There are other enterprise software companies out there, Bill. Yeah. Um, Workday, Oracle, et cetera. How is your company different? What do you do that's different from some of those competitors? What we do is we simplify the way companies run. You know, Andy, in the 20th century, there were really good software companies. Some of them made financials, some of them were database companies, some of them did operating systems, some of them did business applications, but all of them did so to serve a specific department. That has created a lot of complexity because those legacy systems are now a half a century old. So what companies want to do today is they want to radically improve their productivity. So I'll give you an example. The average person working in an office today spends one third of their time swivel chairing between 13 different applications. Meanwhile, most of the things that they're solving for could be handled by digital technology, like deflecting customer inquiries that could be easily answered by a computer, as an example. On top of that, generative AI can improve human productivity by enhancing the work experience by 35% on average. So what we do is we have one platform that enables you to digitally transform in how you manage your assets, your operations, how you service your business. You now have an employee experience where the employee can do everything on the mobile. Mm -hmm. The way they get recruited, hired, onboarded, trained, all their services on the mobile. And now generative AI can give them a digital assistant to make their job easier. Mm -hmm. The customer, not only do you sell somebody, but you want to keep them as a customer, you want to retain them. So the mid office and the back office has to actually keep that brand promise and how you service the customer after you sell them. And today's customer, they don't want heavy, complicated conversations with call center agents. They want to be able to self-service and solve any problem themselves. So they don't have to interface in a complex way with your company. And your engineers, they don't want to do the setup stuff. Right, they just right. want to build great technology. They want to text to code, text to new app development. All of this is done on one platform. Right with a consumer grade UX that integrates with all the brands you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, because I want to jump on that. First of all, I'm, I know all about that swivel chairing. I yeah. think pretty much everyone does. Yeah. But you said recently, no one has to lose right. for us to win. So you're not taking market share from some of those legacy enterprise companies. The market can grow on top of them. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that customers will decide how they want to apply their budgets and what they want to spend their money on. What I'm seeing in the market is more and more companies want to invest in platforms that matter, mm -hmm. not solo technology for a department. They want to serve that department, but what they do and what they invest in has to integrate with everything else. 85% of the digital transformation business cases that companies have already invested in have never delivered a positive ROI because of one simple reason, integration. Mm -hmm. right, right. One system doesn't smoothly talk to another. Ours integrates everything. How does this company matter to, say, the person on the street? Have you ever thought about that? I think about it all the time. Um, because if you think about our purpose, it's to serve the customer's customer. So I was just with Laxman, for example, the CEO at Starbucks. I mean, no better example than serving a person a cup of coffee, which most Americans and people around the world do every day. What if you're staying at the Marriott 
and you order a Starbucks coffee, but there's also a Starbucks kind of right across the street, but you're in the Marriott. Wouldn't it be nice if the system knew geographically where you were and said, you know, you place the order at the Starbucks across the street, but you stay in the Marriott or vice versa, and that you just got your cup of coffee, you never got double billed, but from the company's point of view, all of that complexity was hidden and you never had to worry about any administrative burden to get a credit on your breakfast or your cup mm -hmm. of coffee because ServiceNow did that in the background using generative AI. That's one example about thinking about a person on the street. What, what Bill, what, what insights do you have personally or does your company, does ServiceNow have that others might miss? Well, I think the whole magic of ServiceNow is that ServiceNow began with a guy named Fred Luddy, who is a great founder, who had a simple vision. He made a sales call on American Standard when he was a very young guy. And his dream was to build a piece of technology that improved the average worker's life in the enterprise. And he made a call on Phyllis, and she had kept repetitively doing the same task each and every day to the point where it was grinding her to a halt. She asked him to help. He went home and developed an application, came back the next day, and it was the inception of ServiceNow. When she cried, he cried too. And that man still today serves on this board as our founder, and that generosity gene feeds everything we do. And that's why this year alone, we built 5,000 net new applications onto this ServiceNow platform because we are in service to the world, to our customers, and that's the absolute passion of everyone that works here. All right, you talked about the world. It's a difficult world, it's a complicated world, it's a dangerous world out there. What sort of leadership does it take, given what's going on in Ukraine, given what's going on in Israel, relationship with China, all those things, Bill? The biggest problems in the world are also the world's biggest opportunities because the world needs you more. And you're right. I mean, you could add rising interest rates and inflation and lots of other things to that. We wanted to build a platform that increased the productivity in the world. So for example, if you're dealing with the Middle East war right now, it might be a nice idea to have a platform where you can identify the missing and connect them with their family members or their loved ones. And you would want a common platform in which to do that. And that's a crisis. And we've obviously offered our service to use that platform, and we can implement that platform in 36 hours. And that's what we've done for hurricanes and other natural disasters around the world. So it's really doing things in service to the world, but in every industry today, Andy, they have to take cost out of the equation. They have to. They have to do things more efficiently. They have to do things more productively. And when you combine taking cost out, improving productivity, and creating new frontiers of growth, whether it's an auto manufacturer servicing an electronic vehicle dream, they have to think differently. And they have to digitize and transform their business. I like to think of this as business transformation management. How do I transform my business and how do I manage on an end-to-end -end basis all of the steps in the value life cycle to ultimately give that customer my innovation, take better care of my people, or run a more secure business that manages risks, manages compliance issues, and takes care of assets and operations in a world-class way. Mm -hmm. But I want simplicity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been said that the ultimate form of sophistication is simplicity itself. So I like to think of our platform as the Swiss Army knife of the enterprise. I want to follow up on some points you just made, but before we do that, I want to kind of interrupt the flow for one second. Sure. And people may be wondering, Bill, why you're wearing sunglasses. Yeah. And I know you had an accident, so yeah. that's why you do that, right? Yeah, that's right. Hey, you know, the reality is, you know, a lot of people could think it's I'm a little too cool for school because why do you need them inside? But it really does help me out a lot. I did have a serious accident and I've never been defined by that. I've actually been defined by not being defined by that. Mm -hmm. And I'm so healthy and happy and excited to do what I do 
And I think that a lot of people need to understand that it's not getting knocked down that's gonna mess you up. It's failure to get back up and be the better version of yourself when you do and keep going. So um, I'm a big fan of, you know, some men see things as they are and say, why? I dream things that never were and say, why not? Going back to what you were just talking about yeah. a little bit though, um, I'm curious about some of the shortages and dislocations, the economic ones that you mentioned, the, yeah. the inflation, trying to hire people is difficult, trying to retain people. How are you handling some of those economic pressures? The most important thing I think we did as a company in September of 2022, when there was a lot of corporations going for layoffs, they all said, we have to take people out of the equation. Because as you know, in the run up to this economic turmoil, there was a lot of hiring going on and a lot of growth in the economy and in economies around the world. So people hired a lot of people and they laid a lot of people off. We said no layoffs. I believe that a company is only as strong as each teammate on the team. And each teammate on the team is only as strong as the company. And we were very thoughtful and deliberate about the 12,000 new jobs that we added in the last few years. And we're equally as thoughtful and deliberate about retaining, inspiring, and training great people. Today, we have the highest employee scores in the industry, the best retention rates, and the happiest workforce as measured by things like Glassdoor and all the other means. Mm -hmm. And we're very proud to be on the best places to work list, not because it's the recognition itself that turns us on, it's the people themselves. So we're all about the people here. Right. You mentioned generative AI and gave that example yeah. about Starbucks. Are there other ways that it's transforming what you're doing? Tell us about your vision in the future for AI. I know you've got something going on with NVIDIA, which yes. is great. How does that play out? A lot of companies right now are really using, let's take NVIDIA as an example. One of the great companies in the world, Jensen Wong, one of the greatest, greatest innovators in the world. Not only do we team up with NVIDIA to basically take the strength of his compute power, that GPU, connected to the value chain of other things that they do to innovate large language models. But we use that to fine tune domain specific use cases on the ServiceNow platform. Domain specific to the ServiceNow platform means in most cases, the customer is taking their own data, which they've been curating and purifying and cleaning up now for decades. They finally got it to a point where it's like, wow, what if I could put this massive, exciting new technology on my data, what could I do? Well, for one thing, I could completely revolutionize the employee experience because instead of swivel chairing on those 13 applications, on average burning up 33% productivity, I could use a ServiceNow platform, but even better, I would have incredible help from natural language model use cases that enable me to do my job and my role better. And we cover all the roles. You could take a customer. Wow, they not only can enable me to self-service, but they can recommend next best idea because they know everything about me. Maybe it's an upgrade cycle. Maybe there's something new that's coming out in terms of a new product or a new service. They're anticipating and they have the foresight that I need to feel like they know me. Engineers, mm -hmm. here's the big thing, Andy. Most mm -hmm. of these software companies that have been around for half a century got there by buying a lot of other companies. Mm -hmm. And they have neglected to integrate all of those companies. It's a complicated thing to do. So the engineers don't wanna consolidate the past. They wanna innovate the future. But what's really cool about mm -hmm. that is every engineer comes to work to invent the future. But now right. with generative AI, they don't have to do the intramural stuff, the setup stuff. They can text right to code. They can text to make a right. new app. Right. So that has improved their productivity 40%. So they're happier, they're more productive. Got We're it. getting out thousands of new apps as a result. 
but we're doing it on a common platform. Right. So you don't sacrifice simplicity for innovation. It's a beautiful thing. Let me ask you about young people. Yes. And what do you think the best way to educate young people is in terms of preparing them for jobs and employment and just being productive citizens? Push them. I mean, I think the key to managing young people is not treating them like young people. Hmm. Get them working and get them working early because you can have all the IQ you want and you can study and get 100 on every test and it didn't necessarily give you one ounce of EQ. And this world works because people make it work and you work because you help people work. And I think the work is the thing that really does give people self-respect and improve their self-image and make them somebody. And then they're positioned to do something. And with regard to young people in our company, what I do is I push them way too early. I can take a person that's 21, 22 years old, right out of university, put them in the office of the CEO, give them the most challenging opportunity or problem that I'm going after, and they'll surprise me on the upside every time. So give young people too much experience, do it too soon, and I doubt they'll ever disappoint, and most of the time they'll surprise you on the upside. Love that. How does the U.S. and ServiceNow compete globally? What's the best way to do that? Best way to do that is innovate. Um, but you also have to realize, as you're innovating, you know, I just got back from Tokyo, I cannot innovate and treat the Tokyo market the same way as I do London or New York City. So you have to, or for that matter, Berlin, you have to personalize the brand, the language that you speak to the culture, and the product and the domain around the orientation of how that country operates. Then you add on another layer, which is every industry within every country is slightly different, and every persona within every company is slightly different. What we do is mass customize innovation to every geo, every industry, and every persona in the world. So it's this customer centricity. It's every detail of how you build an application, how you design a user experience, how every detail is covered when you engineer something, but not just engineering, every detail. Mm -hmm. When you deal with an executive and they give you their trust and you keep that promise, and even when you make a mistake, you clean it up quickly and then double down on giving them a double X better service. It is a passion, it is absolute obsession, and it's something that either makes a company what it's meant to be, running on all cylinders, or you become a wandering generality. Just like most companies where they're saying, God, why can't I hit that high note? <laughs> because it's a culture. It's the commitment to customer satisfaction. It's the net promoter score. It's everybody on the inside caring about everybody on the outside. You got me worried that I'm going to become a wandering generality at some point. I mean, I hope not. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a final question, Bill. You became CEO at the end of 2019. Yeah. Right into the teeth of the pandemic. Yeah. I know you started at SAP right before 2008, so you're used to starting with a crisis. <laughs> the stock has doubled since you took over. Market's up about 30 or 40 percent over that time, so you had a great run. Make the case to our audience for owning the stock going forward after that nice run up. You got a high PE. Is there upside going forward, Bill? Absolutely. But the main thing to remember is this. What has history taught us about ServiceNow and why should we have belief in the future? Okay, there's only five enterprise software companies that have crossed the $10 billion value in revenue. Interesting we're on the doorstep of one to be one of those. We are the company that's the fastest growing and we are operating at the rule of 55, which means when you combine our free cash flow margin and our revenue, we're growing at the rule of 55. They say when you're operating at the rule of 40, you're world class. More than ever, I don't rely on that. 
I go back to the innovation. I believe that this platform is a once in a generation platform. I believe that we are in the midst of creating a new category, business model transformation. Because with the power of digital transformation and the combination of generative AI, we now can transform businesses on an end-to-end -end basis. We can take the operating systems that have been out there for half a century and still make them relevant, mm -hmm. but feed that process innovation into a modern platform that makes people happy, it makes customers happy, and it drives unbelievable shareholder value. So we are in service to the customer and their customer, and that'll be our guiding light going forward. And I believe we are only getting warmed up. Bill McDermott, CEO of ServiceNow, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Andy. This is At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer. We'll catch you next time.